Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I am ready to minister the word to you. Today is going to be an unusual day. Somebody say, Naba is in the air. Now, hallelujah. Now, I am going to use this pulpit, and then as soon as I have finished, I want the pulpit gone. Because the Lord gave me a prophetic instruction today on how I must minister the word. I don't know how long I will do it that way, but I have to follow the word of the Lord. So let us stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Stand for the reading of the word. Mm. And we're going to read a lot of scriptures today. Hallelujah. But the first scripture we are going to read is found in Ezekiel. It's on the script, so you need to go right, right down. It's the book of Ezekiel. Well, yes, Ezekiel chapter 4. From verse 1 to 17. Hmm. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's read together. Ezekiel, son of man, find a brick and sketch a picture of Jerusalem on it. Then prepare to attack the brick as if it were a real city. Now, what's happening? This is called a prophetic act. It's called what? A prophetic act. So sometimes prophets are called to do a prophetic act. Today, I'm going to do a prophetic act. Jesus. Hmm. He says, from verse 2, he says, then what? Then prepare to attack the brick as if it were a real city. Build a dirt mound and a ramp up on the top. And surround the brick with enemy camps. On every side, put large wooden poles as though you were going to break it down. The gate to the city. Set up an iron pan like a wall between you and the brick. All of this will be a warning for the people of Israel. After that, lie down on your left side and stay there for 390 days as a sign of Israel's punishment. One day for each year of its suffering. Who wants a ministry like Ezekiel? This is a prophetic sign. (laughs) Then, next one. Then turn over and lie on your right side 40 more days. This should be a sign of Judah's punishment. For each year of its suffering. The brick stands for Jerusalem. So attack it. Stare at it. And shout angry warnings. I will tie you up so you can't leave until your attack has ended. Get a large bowl. Then mix together wheat, barley, beans, lentils, and millet and make some bread. This is what you shall eat for 390 days you're lying down. This is where we get the word Ezekiel bread from. Eat only a small loaf of bread each day. And drink only two large cups of water. Use dry human waste to start a fire. Jesus. Who said it? God. God is telling you I'm so disgusted. So I want to show them how disgusted I am. He says what? Use dry human waste to start a fire. Then bake the bread on the coals where everyone can watch you. When I scatter the people of Israel among the nations, they shall have to eat food that is unclean, just as you must. I said, Lord, please don't make me do that. Never in my life have I eaten food that will make me unacceptable to you. I've never eaten anything that died a natural death or was killed by a wild animal or that you said was unclean. The Lord replied, okay, instead of human waste, I will let you bake bread on a fire made of cow manure. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Jesus. This is the... Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Whew. Turn to your neighbor say, the father can get fed up. So he's showing how he is disgusted. He's telling the prophet to demonstrate this. 
and the prophet becomes the sign of it. Hmm. He says, Ezekiel, the people of Jerusalem will starve. They will have so little food and water that they will be afraid and hopeless. Everyone will be shocked at what is happening. And because of their sins, they will die a slow death. This is called prophetic acts. And the Lord has commanded me to preach and prophesy today in a prophetic act. Which I will start after I read the main scripture. Reba, I saw it in a vision. Reba Savraba. Let's come now to the start. Bless the Lord. Right to the opening scripture. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 7 to 14. And some of the Hebrews crossed over Jordan to the land of God and Gilead. And as for Saul, he was still in Gilead. And all the people followed him trembling. They waited seven days according to the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were, were scattered from him. So Saul said, bring a burnt offering and peace offering here to me. And he offered the burnt offering. Now as it happened, as soon as he had finished presenting the burnt offering, that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him, that he might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul said, when I saw the people were scattered for me, and they did not come within the days appointed, and the Philistines gathered together at Mishmash, then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore I felt compelled, and offered a burnt offering, and Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord will have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept back what the Lord commanded you. Next. Okay, verse 1. And the day came that Jonathan the son of Saul said to the young men who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison which is on the other side. Now today I'm going to preach what's called exegesis. So you have to read the scripture and then I'm going to take off. Let's read. And the day came that Jonathan the son of Saul said to the young man who bore his armor, come let us go over to the Philistines garrison, which is on the other side. But he did not tell his father. And Saul stayed in the edge of Gibash under the pomegranate tree in Micron. And the People who were with him were about 600 men. And Ahiah, the son of Atub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phidus, the son of Eli, Jehovah's priest in Shiloh, was wearing an ephod. And the people did not know that Jonathan was gone. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a rocky crag on one side and a rocky crag on the other. And the name of one was called Bozes, and the name of other Shineth. And the one crag was a pillar on the north in the front of Mishmash, and the other southward in the front of Gibash. And Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised ones. It may be that Jehovah will work for us. For there is no restraint to Jehovah to save by many or by few. Somebody say, Jonathan was a game changer. And his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Turn, for behold, I am with you, according to your heart. And Jonathan said, behold, we will go over to these men and we will show ourselves to them. And if they say this, stand still until we come to you. Then we'll stand still in our place. I will not go over to them. But if they say, come to us, then we'll go up. For Jehovah has delivered them up into your hands. And this shall be a sign to us. And both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, behold, the Hebrews come out of the holes where they've hidden themselves. 
And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come to us and we'll teach you a thing. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for Jehovah has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed after him. And this was the first blow. When Jonathan and his armor bearer struck about 20 men in about half of a furrow of an acre of a field, and there was trembling in the army in the field and among all the people, the garrison and the soldiers also trembled, and the earth quaked. That means he was operating under an anointing. So as he moved, he was killing by that anointing, and then there was an earthquake. So he was under a special anointing. You see that? Okay, let's move on. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. And the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, a multitude what, had melted away. That's a multitude of the Philistines. And Saul said to the people with him, Number now and see who is gone from us. And when they counted, behold, Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. And Saul said to Ahia, Bring the ark of God here. For the ark of God was at that time with the sons of Israel. And it happened, while Saul talked to the priest, the noise in the army of the Philistines went on and grew greater. And Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. And Saul and all the people with him gathered, and they went to battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his fellow. That's among the Philistines. And there was a great panic. And the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before who had gone up with them into the camp all around, even they also turned to be with the Israelites, who were with Saul and Jonathan. And all the men of Israel who had hidden themselves in Mount Ephraim heard that the Philistines had fled. Even they also followed them into battle. So the Lord used Jonathan. Mighty anointing. He actually broke the head. He stamped on the head of the snake. And Jehovah saved Israel that day. And the battle passed over to what? Beazim. And the men of Israel were distressed on that day. Why? For Saul had commanded the people, Curseth is the man that eats food until evening, so that I may be avenged on my enemies. So none of the people tasted food. I don't know what kind of philosophy that is, but read. And all the men of the land came into the forest, and there was honey on the ground. And when the people had come into the woods, behold, a flow of honey. But no one put his hand on his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan did not hear when his father made the people swear. And he put forth the end of his rod into the hand and dipped it into the honeycomb and put it into his mouth. And his eyes were lightened. And one from the people answered and said, Your father strictly charged the people with an oath, saying, Curseth is the man who eats food this day, and the people were weary. And Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Because see how my eyes have been what? Lightened. Because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more if the people had happened to eat freely today of the spoil of the enemies which they found? For would not there have been a greater slaughter among the Philistines? And they struck the Philistines that day, from Mishmash to Arjun, and the people were faint. And the people flew on the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and killed them on the ground. And the people ate with blood. And they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against Jehovah in that day. They eat with blood. And he said, You have transgressed this day. Roll a great stone to me. And Saul said, Disperse yourself among the people and say to them, Let each one bring his ox here, and each one bring his sheep, and kill them here, and eat. But do not sin against Jehovah in eating with the blood. And each man of all the people brought his ox in his hand that night, and killed them there. Verse 35, And Saul built an altar to Jehovah, and the same was the first altar that built to Jehovah. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and spoil them until morning, night. And let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do all that is, seems good to you. Then the priest said, Let us draw near here to God. And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go up after the Philistines? Would you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not. And Saul said, Draw near here, all the chief of the people. 
and know and see what has been done today. For as Jehovah lives, who saves Israel, though it is Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. There was not a man among all the people who answered. Then he said to all Israel, you be on one side and Jonathan my son and I will be on the other side. And the people said to Saul, do what seems good to you. And Saul said to Jehovah, the God of Israel, give me a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken and the people escaped. And Saul said, cast lots between me and my son Jonathan. And Jonathan was taken. And Saul said to Jonathan, tell me what you've done. And Jonathan told him, I said, I did taste a little honey with the end of my rod in my hand. Behold me, I must die. And Saul answered, God do so and more so for you shall surely die, Jonathan. And the people said to Saul, shall Jonathan die? Who has worked out this great salvation in Israel? Far be it. As Jehovah lives, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground. For he has worked with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan so that he did not die. Hmm. Labra Savadesha. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for what you shall do in this service. In the name of Jesus, amen. Take your seats. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Move this for me, for me. The Lord spoke to me. And he says, I must prophesy to you blindfolded. He says, because my people are blind to my ways. Like Saul was blind. Jesus. So blindfold me. Jesus. La Batasha. Jesus. Okay. Amen. Okay, hallelujah. Yes, I'm there. Good. Okay. There is a word that's in my spirit. For you see, Saul was blind to the ways of heaven. Saul was blind to the ways of the kingdom. And whenever people are blind to the ways of the kingdom, and they are blind to the agenda of God, and they are blind to the operations of God in their lives, when they do stuff, they actually destroy and sabotage the things that God has prepared for them. So you see the man Saul, Saul the king, his son, hallelujah, by the anointing of God, his son by the anointing was used by God, used by God to bring victory to the nation of Israel. And then we see one of the almost traits in which you see Saul make a vow and an oath by his emotions. So you see people who have an almost virus, people who are attacked by the spirit of almost make decisions that are birthed in emotion. Why did he say, Cursed is the man who eats any food until we have chased and destroyed the enemy when they have been fighting from night? He made it based on what? His emotions. And he made the decision based on his emotions. One of the things you've got to understand is that people who have a almost straight, they are blind to the effect of emotional decisions. They are blind. They do not see that the decision that I'm taking is birthed by my emotions. And because they are blind, when they seek to pursue goals, if I seek to find my way, I'm going to do what? I am going to hurt somebody. I'm going to fall somewhere. Are with me? Now, the other thing that he was blind to. Oh, he was blind to. His son wrought the victory. And he was willing to kill his son. Because people who are almost do not value friends in, that fought for them in battle. Jonathan was the reason they had the victory. But he was willing to kill Jonathan. Jesus. 
For the Spirit spoke to me. He says, there is a blindness. There is a blindness that has come over many people. A blindness to the ways of God. A blindness to the ways of the Spirit. They are blind to how I operate in the earth. They are blind to how I work with people and through people. They are blind. They are blind to the value of divine relationships. They are blind. They would put a sword through somebody that I called to assist them in a time of war. They will put a sword through somebody that stood for them when all chips were down. They would stand, they would stand with that person when that person fights for them in battle. But when battle is over, they will put a sword to that person. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, they are blind to my ways. They are blind to my ways. So there are many who are blind to the ways of God. And just like Saul was blind, so are many blind. Now Saul was blind to following heavenly protocol. Because he elevated pleasing the people above the protocol that he was a king and not a priest. That's number one. Number two, he was blind to taking responsibility. Because responsibility is the price of greatness. And so there are many that are blind. They would never, never take responsibility. Because they don't understand that if I take responsibility, hallelujah, then God can give me mercy. But for many, they do not take responsibility, therefore God cannot give them mercy. They do not understand the ways of God. They think they can pursue the agenda of God, the blessings of God in any way that they choose. But they are blind. It's like a woman who says, who comes from another country, says she comes from Russia. And she says, I want to send my child to school. And the woman then takes the child and she lives near Dighton Griffith School. And she takes the child, brings the child to school and says, principal, I want my child to start school. The principal cannot do that. Because guess what? That's not what? The procedure. That's not what? The way. There is a way the government of Barbados brings children into the school system. Well, there is a way the kingdom of God operates. And many are blind. Oh my God. They are blind to the way the kingdom of God operates. You're in this service, but you're just like this spiritually. You're in this service. But you're just like this. But today, hallelujah. I said today, by the anointing of God, the scale shall fall from your eyes. Your eyes shall open to the ways of God. Your eyes shall open to how God operates. Your eyes shall open to the agenda of God. For you have been blind too long. Sincerity does not compensate for blindness. Tenacity doesn't compensate for blindness. You are blind to how God moves. You are blind to God's principles. You are blind to God's procedures. And whenever you're blind, you become almost. Because guess what? If I am blind, if I cannot see, guess what? I'm almost going to make it to my office. <laughs> Jesus. I'm almost going to make it to the bathroom. I'm almost going to make it to our car. Because guess what? I can see. I am going to trip up. I'm going to fall down. I'm going to hurt myself. Because guess what? I am blind. But I came with an anointing today. I said I came with an anointing today. I came with an anointing to destroy blindness of people. Because there is a spirit that causes people to become almost. That means they are spiritually blind. They cannot see spiritually. And they are doing stuff but they are blind. Jesus. Saul was blind to the fact that you are sabotaging yourself. The Bible says that Saul troubled Israel. Who troubled Israel? 
Saul, he didn't say the Philistines troubled Israel. So when there's a spirit of almost in you, you trouble your life. Shut up, Baba, say it again. You, tr- you see, Saul was blind to the fact that he was what? Troubling Israel. He was blind to how to lead Israel. Could you be the one troubling your romantic life? Could you be the one troubling your financial life? Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you be the one troubling your destiny? Could you be the one troubling? Oh, hallelujah. Right now, I don't even know where I am. East, west, north, south. Hallelujah. Because guess what? I'm blindfolded. I can't see. My God. Hallelujah. I want to preach in your direction, but I can only preach by what I hear. My God. But I've come to prophesy to somebody. Hallelujah. I've come to prophesy to somebody that does set the Lord. Today my angels will remove the scales from people's eyes. Today my angels will remove the blindfold from people's eyes. For many of you are blind to the ways of the kingdom. You are blind to the way things happen in the kingdom of God. You believe you can use your procedure to operate in the kingdom of God which was established way before you. It's an eternal kingdom. There is a procedure from the kingdom that you must follow. Jesus. And then you have something worse. You have the blind leading the blind. So there are blind pastors, blind apostles, blind prophets, blind ministers who lead further blind people. Jesus. My God. That's the blind leading what? The blind. And all of them will fall in what? A pit. Javada Satai. And whenever you're led by the blind and you are the blind, you will become almost. Jesus. But today, there shall be a change. There are women in the, I can see women. You're a single woman, but you're blind. You are actually blind to the way God is going to operate and get you married. You're blind to it. There are men, you are blind. There are men, you're blind to how God is going to financially prosper you. God told me to put this on so that you can see it when you're sleeping. So that you understand, am I like how Bishop was? Jesus. Rapatashatai. Oh, because for the spirit of all must to leave this church, blindness must leave the people. Some of you have been doing the same thing over and over again, getting the same dark results. But you guess what? You're blind to it. Shavada Basa. But today. There shall be an opening, Hata. I said today there shall be an opening. I said today there shall be an opening. I said today there shall be an opening. Savra Batishidikide. Hallelujah. Lord said I can take it out. I've made my point. Mambra Savara. Hallelujah. You see something? I saw this in the spirit. I saw the church. And the Lord said, they're blind. He said, I want to prosper them. I want to increase them. I want to propel them. I want to do the things, hallelujah, that they are believing me for, that they have prayed for. But guess what? They ain't seeing it. Shakataba. Zevede. La Mandeshe. They're not seeing it. They're not seeing it. So he says, Put on and preach blindfolded in front of them so to show them how they appear in front of the devil. Because you appear in front of the demonic 
and he knows you're blind and he's hitting you from where you don't even know you're getting blows and you've all you know is when you get hit boom you just feel it where did this come from boom where did this come from because guess what you're blind you're blind so spiritual blindness must be eliminated today hi yeah yeah what spiritual blindness must be what eliminated today rabato cheve now i want you to find on the scriptures revelation chapter 3 the church of laodicea find that for me hallelujah ma 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 because there is a operation of the spirit that must be done today hallelujah because god is going to destroy the spirit of what almost in this place shavata sata hallelujah hallelujah now there are three things number one is the ways of god so you don't understand god has ways ways there's a way god speaks to people there's a way god does things on the earth when jesus began his ministry the first thing jesus did was to find divine relationships so god does things through what relationships so if you don't understand that you'll not be relational and you will destroy relationships you'll be hard to live with hard to function with hard to be around nasty horrible but speaking in tongues and casting devils out and you will not be able to get ahead because the people that need to work with you and you work with them for you to move forward will not stay in your life because you don't understand that one of the ways of God is that he does what he works through relationships he spoke to Moses he appeared to Moses he says I'm calling you to take a people out of bondage to greatness and then he says Moses Aaron your brother is coming to meet you <laughs> that is I'm sending Aaron your brother to connect with you so that both of you can do what begin this mission that's what he brought him what a what relationship the angel appears to Mary he says Mary hallelujah he says you're going to conceive a child child's name is going to be called Jesus he said by the way your cousin Elizabeth has a child by the Holy Ghost guess what get up and go to Elizabeth he is what he's a connector now there are people who God you and God God has connected you to them but you treat them like the gas attendant people who are connected to your warfare Jesus could you believe that Jonathan Saul was willing to kill his son the people had to say never he was willing to kill his son that is how the man had no value the man had no no value and the son is the one who got the victory so even if it wasn't his son just the fact that he got the victory <laughs> but he's willing to kill his son who got the victory like kill him no Jesus no value no value because he's blind he's a blind man because as a prophesied last Sunday is that God had ordained that Saul be the one through Jesus who Jesus will come through it was supposed to be the son of Saul Jesus the son of Saul but when he made that mistake and never took responsibility the prophet Samuel said this day has the kingdom and the everlasting dynasty that God planned for you has been taken from you Jesus. Labra Safa. 
Now read this. He says, And to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. I would wish you were cold or hot, so that because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I would do what? Vomit you out of my mouth. Let's move on. Because you say I am rich, I'm wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that in the spirit realm, you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. She so said, in the spirit realm, you are naked, you are wretched, you are poor, you are blind, in the spirit realm. Rabba Tashaya. Oh, something's going to happen in this church today. Because somebody is going to change for real. <laughs> Woo. I said somebody is going to change for real. Because I see in the spirit that there is a people about to rise who are going to kill almost. You have been an almost person, been raised up in an almost house. But let me tell you, you are going to put almost to death. And that which heaven has called you to shall emerge from you. You will no longer be an almost man, an almost woman. But what God has called you to do will be done in your life. So these are poor, wretched, visible, poor, blind, and naked. He says, I cancel you to buy from me. He says, I cancel you to buy from me. That means to move from almost, you have to pay a price. He said, I cancel you to buy. That means you have to buy it. It's not free. It is not like salvation. Jesus. <laughs> Woo! The death of almost is not free. I said the death of almost is not free. He said there's a price. He says you need to buy from me. You need to pay a price. La batasha. So there's a price that needs to be paid for you to destroy the spirits that have contained you. Shut up. But I see you paying the price. <laughs> I said, I'm going to push the price to you. Hallelujah. La Nasia. He says, I can't see you to buy from me gold refined in fire. The gold he's speaking about is the gold that is inside of you. He says, you need to pay the price to mine the gold in you. Jesus. And the gold in you has to be refined by fire. So there's a gold on the inside of you. I said there's a gold. There was a gold inside of David. It was the gold of a warrior king. It was the gold of a psalmist. But he had to pass through the fire of Goliath. He had to pass through the fire of Saul chasing him. He had to pass through that fire. And until he passed through that fire, that gold was not ready. So there's a gold on the inside of you. There was a gold in Joseph. It was the gold of who? A prime minister. But he had to pass through the fire. He had to pass through, hallelujah, the pit he had to pass through the prison before he could stand with that gold in front of Pharaoh there was a gold in front of Daniel there was a gold inside of Daniel but he had to do what he had to pass through the lion's den so there's a gold on the inside of you you've got to locate it you've got to extract it and then it's got to be refined I've come to prophesy that there is a price to pay for you to mine the gold on the inside of you but your gold would be refined by fire Jesus it is refined by fire he says when you go through the water and when you go through the fire ha shadabaya 
Hallelujah. The fire will not destroy you. The fire will refine you. I said the fire that somebody's going through. That fire will not destroy you. I said the fire will refine you. Until you understand the purpose of fire. You will not be able to relate with fire properly. But I've come to prophesy to somebody. That the fire of affliction. The fire of adversity. The fire of opposition. The fire of obstacles. Is not there there to destroy you is there to refine you if you would mind the gold on the inside of you your gold will be purified by the fire it will burn from you things that need to be burned from your life barasika he said you need to pay the price for gold he says then he says and that you that you may be rich. That is, for you to be rich in the spirit, that means you need to mine the gifts that are in you. Mind the things I put in you. The gifts in you. The anointings in you. The deposits of heaven on the inside of you. Clusters of intuition, intelligence, and instinct that I put on the inside of you. My God, I put them on the inside of you, mine them out of you, refined by fire. Some say refined by fire, that you may be rich. Jesus, oh my God. Next thing is this. Wow. He says, and white garments that you may be clothed. The white garments. We all know, we have preached to you many times. The word garments are what? The garments of what? The anointing. Because the anointing is like a what? It's a garment. That's the garment of the spirit. Like right now, there's a prophetic anointing on my life. There's a prophetic garment on me. It covers me. Jesus. It does what? It covers me. So there's a garment. Who? There's a garment. So there's a garment that you need to buy. Oh my God. You see, there's a garment for you. There's a garment for you. It will cover your nakedness. It will cover your vulnerability. It will cover the areas in your life that are vulnerable. It will cover you. It will cover your shame. Oh my God. It will cover your mistakes. It will cover your errors. It will cover your mistakes. It's a garment of the anointing. It will come on you. You can buy it. You buy it. You pay a price for it. Jesus. And thirdly, Oh, he says that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. So what he's saying is that you have done shameful things. But if this garment comes on you, the demonic will not exploit your shame and man will not exploit your shame. Jesus. (laughs) See, there is a government that if it comes on you, your mistakes, they don't matter. Jesus. But if the government is not on you, your shame will be exploited. Manda safarabasa. Rapa to Somebody say, I want the garment of the spirit. Jesus. Ooh. David had that garment. I said, David had the garment. His shame, hallelujah. The garment covered his shame. The garment of the anointed, it covered his shame. Jesus. And Jesus was still called the son of David. Hallelujah. He was called what? The son of David. Because the garment, he paid the price for the garment of the spirit to cover the shame of his nakedness. Jesus. And then he said, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. That means there is an anointing to make you see. In the spirit realm. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah. this is not for a prophet. Is this speaking to prophets? Is this for everybody? Every believer. He says, the problem is, the spiritual eye salve has never touched your spiritual eyes. 
If it touches your spiritual eyes, all of a sudden, your eyes will open to the ways of God. Your eyes will open to the agenda of God. And your eyes will open to the operations of God. Jesus. Your eyes will open to it. Now, this is what Jesus is saying. You must care for it. You must yearn for it. He says, indeed, he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous. Now, he tells you how to enter. Who wants to know the price? Look, this is the price. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I would what? Dine with him. My God. I will fellowship with him. hi yeah, 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 yeah. And he with me. How do you open the door? Opening the door to the agenda of God is called what? Prayer. Jesus. So, there is a price in prayer that has to be paid to mine the gold in you. Yakata. To get a garment to cover your nakedness. Rapata shata. Oh, hallelujah. To get a garment to cover your nakedness. And to get eyes out. Hallelujah. To him who overcomes. <laughs> Ooh, to him who overcomes. So I'm seeing in my spirit right now that there are people. You came to the service and you are almost married, almost happy, almost prosperous, almost anointed, almost have a great prayer life, almost study the Bible. Your children are almost working with God. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Your family is almost working with God. You're almost in the will of God. Jesus. Oh, just full of almost. I said, just full of almost. Just full of almost. But I came to prophesy to you the end of almost. I said, I came to prophesy the end of almost. Because there's a people who are prepared to do what? Pay the price. So what you've got to do, you have to open a door. Somebody say, I have to open a door in my life for divine intervention. Now, you see, you need to understand the exact door you're opening. He says, if you open the door, I will come and I'll do what? I will dine with you. That means I will sit with you and I begin to explain things to you. Jeez. I will sit with you and we'll have a conversation. My God. You see, some of you, a problem, you and the Lord have never had a conversation. It is just you talking and you hear him say one or two words. You and him have never had a conversation where he says, my daughter, this is why this happened. He said, but I thought it was this way. He says, no. This is why. This is how it happened. This is how it entered. This is what you must do. This is how you must change. This is what I have for you. He said, you've never, oh my God, you have never had a conversation like that. You've never had a dining. When you and somebody dines, you sit at the table. They talk, you talk. They talk, you talk. There is what? Conversation. I came to prophesy the anointing to bring somebody into this realm of fellowship with God. Jesus. Without this, I would not be who I am. Jesus. Brapa seke teke se. The times I go to pray, the Lord says, No prayer. Like today, I was praying, He says, No prayer. He says, I'm going to talk to you about the next 18 months. What I want to do in your life in the next 18 months. So He spoke to me about the next 18 months. He says, that After the 18 months is over, He told me, Then I'm going to do something 16 months after. So I know 18 plus 16, I know what is coming. Jesus. That is what conversation. He says, don't pray. He says, turn the music off. Let us talk. Shaka tapa. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not because I'm a prophet. I know prophets who don't hear. Shh. Jesus. 
it shall be added to you today. But there's a price. There is what? There's a price. 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 La brasa varabasita. There's a price. Okay, let's go back to the scripture. Let's go back to the slides. Let me tell you the price. The Lord spoke to me. He said, the church must open a portal over their lives. Individuals must what? Open a door for Jesus. Now, your ancestors and you, you have opened doors for devils. How many of you can say, I opened doors for devils in the past? But I open doors for what? Devils. Now you need to open a door for Jesus. How many of you have opened doors for devils to dine with you? Are you with me? You open doors for what? Devils to dine with you. Now it's time to open doors for what? Jesus to do what? Dine with you. Jesus. And the Lord said, He said, I want you to commission the church to go on a 10-day fast. Jesus. 10-day fast. 10-day fast. Rabba Bashata. Now, if any of you were in the spirit, you will be sensing spirit of fasting coming. Because he said a 10 day fast and the purpose of this fast is to open a door in your life for divine intervention. Now let me explain. Jesus said this kind goeth not but by what? Prayer and fasting. So Jesus is saying, he says, listen, the door. Now what does it mean door? The book of Psalms says, he says, Lift your heads, you gates. You everlasting doors. Lift up your heads, you gates. Now, does a gate have a head you can lift up? No. The gates are people. You are a gate. You are a door. That is why your father can go and do something and open a door of destruction in the house. Your mother can go do something. You can go do something. And it opens a door. And devils come and devastate your children, devastate people's lives, devastate all kinds of stuff. You can do that. In the same way, you can open a door to the divine. Jesus. This is a fast to open the door so that the relationship, the fellowship required for the spirit of almost to leave you will be done. My God. We are beginning the fast on Wednesday. Wednesday. So people can prepare for it. Hallelujah. 10 day fast. Those of you who you're new to fasting, you fast from 6 to 6. Those of you who are not new to fasting, or those of you who are bold, we're going straight. Shavadasa. Now, if you're new to fasting, six to six. Some you can go three straight, the rest. But there's some of you, you need to go straight. You have enough experience to go straight. Because here's the thing we mean business. You see, we mean business. You see, we mean business. You see, if you are not fed up with almost, then that's, that's all right. But if you are like me, we are fed up with almost. You see, and let me explain something to you. This is why we have to fast. Do, do you know why I have to fast? Because the Lord spoke to me. And I want you, those of you who have been saved, who here has been saved for over 10 years? Okay, now. Okay, you understand what I'm saying. Who has lived in Barbados for more than 10 years? And saved for more than 10 years? Okay. Now, you understand this. Barbados has had 
almost great ministers. There have been some ministers, if they had just gone from level to level. Do you know Barbados is one of the only countries in the Caribbean that does not have a minister who has touched the world? I travel around. I preach in the largest churches all over the region. Many of the, 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 the notable leaders of the Caribbean are part of my organization. I'm their leader in CILC. I preach in their churches. They, we, I mean, there's a church in Suriname. The guy has a hundred churches in Belgium, France, Holland, all these places. We don't have that caliber. Are you with me? Now, here's the thing. We have the caliber in gifting, but not the caliber in food. Because something always happens from gifting to manifestation. There always is a disaster, or a scandal, or a sword, or a <laughs> something. There is a tragedy always happens. Am I lying or am I saying the truth? Am I saying the truth? So the Lord spoke to me. He said, he said, the spirit, the demonic spirit that has controlled the Barbados church is the spirit of almost. Therefore, for you to break it, you have to fast. Because it's the stronghold over the church. Listen, there are ministers in Barbados who their destiny is to impact the world. They have not impacted the world. <laughs> they have not. But they had the ministries for it. They had the callings for it. They had the anointings for it. But something happened and they went dry. And they wonder, what has happened? So the spirit here is the spirit of almost. In your mind, start to think. Just think. You can start to call their names. All of a sudden, ministry goes this way, hit plateau. We don't have a Mars Monroe. I was in Bahamas. We were in Bahamas. We do have a Mars Monroe. No. I've been in Trinidad. I mean, do you have a Colonel Nelson? No. I mean, do you have a bottle beard? No. We don't have legends in the realm of the spirit that have other ministries across the region. Everything is shrouded by controversy and scandal. <laughs> am I saying the truth or am I lying? Saying I'm truth. saying the truth. It's shrouded, caught by controversy, scandal, because there is a demon that we have to handle. Now, because the demon handles the ministers, to handle you is easy. Think about it. The big ministers, it handles them. <laughs> so, where do you stand? <laughs> it clips their churches. It clips their wings. And they just evaporate. Some leave town. <laughs> Jesus. Okay? Hallelujah. But here's what I'm telling you. I have encountered that spirit before. It's a terrible spirit. So I'm now telling you that to order to destroy that spirit, you have to fast. Because it's what? A stronghold. Bahamas does not have a spirit of almost. Bahamas has ministries that have touched the world. That have changed the direction of the church. So Bahamas, I mean, in fact, we were among one of the great ministers in Bahamas. And we just, my God, you see the influence of Dr. Miles, oh my God. In their language, the way they talk, the way they move, the, their vision. They don't think limited. Because guess what? They have done it before. 
They've had conferences in their country that the world has come to. What conference do we have that the world comes to? Who? What conference? Those people come from America to the conference, from England to the conference, from Germany to the conference. Where? What anointing do we have that draws people from all over? None. Are you with me? Why is that? You see, I didn't come to play games. Are you with me? Play games is not inside of me. Are you with me? I didn't come to play games. I call it as it is. So I'm telling you right now, right, is that we have got to deal with the spirit. It's the spirit of what? Almost. So we have to deal with it. Have you realized how many ministers, good ministers, actually leave ministry or leave the country? <laughs> you know that. Absolutely. They're just like, I'm God. It's the truth. It's because it's a demon. Do you know I have seen the demon? I've seen the demon. It's a spirit. So if it affects the leaders of the church, what about you? So that's why we have to collectively break the stronghold. So this is a very serious fast for you and for us. Okay, let's read. Let me tell you why fasting destroys it. Let's read the scripture and then I'm going to move and prophesy. It says, isn't this the fast that I've been choosing to do what? Loose the bands of injustice and to untie the cords of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. So the yoke that needs to be destroyed is the yoke of what? Almost. So fasting is, has yoke breaking anointing. Are you with me? And when you fast as commanded by the Lord, there is an anointing released. And this is a fast that has been called by the Spirit of the living God. For some of you, it should be such an easy fast. You will fast and you will wonder if there's something called food. Because you can, there's a grace that can come on you for fasting. I decree, fasting grace will come on people. Because we are fasting for this purpose. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Next. It says, this is why. And fasting has specific grace to destroy almost. He says, then shall what? Your light will break forth like the dawn. That's your light. Your ministry, your anointing, your breakthrough. It shall do what? Break forth. Like the dawn. Jesus. And your healing shall spring forth what? Quickly. And your vindication shall go before you. And the glory of God shall guard your back. Oh my God. Then you will call. And the Lord will answer. You cry for help. And he will respond. Here am I. If you do now, in order for this fast to work, there's something you got to do. So you have to fast and you have to do, there's one thing you got to do, which you, if you do it during fasting, you're only going on hunger strike. You're only going on a diet. You must make sure you do this in fasting. He says, if you do away with the yoke and what? The pointing of the finger and malicious talk. So when you fast, your mouth must fast other people's business. <laughs> your mouth must fast other people's business. So when you're fasting, it's like, listen, I'm fasting. Don't give me, I'm not interested. Right now, I'm fasting to destroy almost. <laughs> You understand? I'm almost happy, <laughs> almost joyful, and almost prosperous. So right now, I want to deal with almost. Do not bring me any news. <laughs> not interested. Don't WhatsApp. Don't watch down. Don't watch. 
He said, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the needs of afflicted souls, then your light shall rise in darkness and your night shall become like the noonday. Your night means areas in your life that you can't see. You can't see the way. It's like night to you. It's like, I need direction. It's like night to you. He says, your night will become like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Midday. That's the power of this type of fast. Jesus. Say, and the Lord will guide you continuously and satisfy your soul in past places. That's it. I'm through. That's my message for today. Shh. Hallelujah. Brabata shakata. That's my message for today. Short message. We can no longer be blind. I said we can no longer be blind. Brasavara We can no longer be blind.